Good morning, everyone, and thank you for, for being here for Teresa and especially for her family. Chris, Mark, Travis, all of Teresa's family, all of those of you who loved Teresa, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you today and always. We've come together this morning to remember the joyful life that Teresa had to celebrate her life as well as to mourn our loss. Teresa was mother but before that, she was sister and daughter. She was a grandmother and aunt. She was a good friend. And we're here as well to worship and to proclaim our Lord Christ, crucified and risen, as we remember the full life that she did live. We give thanks for her life and we commend her to our merciful Lord as we comfort one another in our grief. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember you today as we remember our sister Teresa. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us as we mourn. Give us the faith to see that death has been swallowed up in victory, in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered into our heavenly home in the company of all of your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Teresa's family has selected two passages of scripture to be read this morning. The first is Psalm 23, and the second is from John's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 24 through 29. Hear God's word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in your presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And our reading from John's Gospel. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. 
Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of, the con of condemnation. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be to God. I once heard it said that God never sees his children die. He simply sees them coming home. And I like that image. That when Teresa passed from this life, it wasn't dying so much as it was her coming home to her heavenly home with Jesus. I have no doubt that with Teresa's passing, it was indeed her home going to paradise. It was her final trip of a lifetime filled with travels, adventures with her best friend, Chris. The difference was that on this journey, instead of Chris accompanying her, she was accompanied by Jesus. There was one other difference. She didn't bring her camera with her this time. And as those that know Teresa well, she loved to travel. She loved to go to new places and have new adventures. She loved seeing everything. And on those adventures, she nearly always brought her camera. And I'm told it was never the cell phone camera. It was always a real camera. She wanted to capture everything, the people, the sights, the sounds. Chris tells me that she frequently would ask him to pull over and stop so that she could take a picture of a beautiful rainbow, a sunset. He shared with me that on one occasion, when they were driving through Yellowstone Park, a bear ran across the road in front of the car. Teresa asked Chris to pull over so she could snap a picture of the bear. And before Chris knew what was happening, she was out of the car and running towards the bear, trying to take a picture. The bear turned around and noticed that she was running towards the bear. And Chris says he has never seen her run so fast as she did back into the safety of the car. Chris was horrified, of course, and he asked her, are you crazy? And her response, I know but I think I got a good picture of it. <laughs> that was Teresa. She loved her family. She found great joy in spending time with Chris, with Mark, with Travis, with all of the family. She loved her grandchildren. You were her pride and joy. She loved spending time with you. You brought her so much happiness. She was in her element, I think, when, when she was with her family, just surrounded by that love and giving all of that love that she had to give. She also loved the sisterly bond that she had with Jane and Anne. They loved one another, and they still do. They were a trio. And she found her soulmate while in college and met and married Chris. They were married 49 years this year and looking forward to 50. He was her favorite travel companion. He was her confidant. He was her life. But as those closest to Teresa know, she did have many struggles. When she was a child, she was afflicted with rheumatic fever. And as a result, she lived with a constant battle with a number of health issues, including her heart condition and a compromised immune system that made her very susceptible to illnesses. But you know what? These things, they didn't get the better of her. They may have slowed her down some, 
and they may have worried her and caused her some anxiety, but she was never the type of person to say, woe is me, and sit and have a pity party. She just accepted it, talked to family about it, and especially talked to God about it. Yes, she worried. Teresa had quite a bit of anxiety about her health, but part of that anxiety was also about what would happen when she was gone for her family, her concern for those that she loved. Throughout the Bible, there are many places where it tells us that we will have difficult times in our lives. And in Psalm 23, which we just heard, it's a case in point where it describes walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And yet this same Psalm makes it clear to us that God is with us every step of the way as we travel through that valley. And I believe that Teresa took those words to heart. I believe that she felt in her heart the words, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Despite her fears, Teresa's eyes were always focused on Jesus, and she made the absolute most of her earthly journey. How many of you know about her love of music? Yep, Teresa loved music. She had a gift. She sang in the choir, both at Patmos United Methodist Church, where I was her pastor, but at previous churches as well. And I heard yesterday talking with folks about their memories of her singing in the choir, but also sharing her gift of playing the piano. Teresa loved to play her piano at home, at church. She shared her gift at church. And she was the person who would practice and practice and practice wanting to make sure that when she played at church, it was flawless. And sometimes she'd make some mistakes. But you know what? To God, the fact that she was sharing that gift, to everyone who heard it, it was always flawless because it was from Teresa's heart. In John's Gospel, we read the words of Jesus that said, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Teresa was a believer. She knew and she trusted Jesus as her Savior. She trusted Jesus with her life and with her struggles. And even while she was afraid, particularly during her last few weeks, she knew that when the time came, she would be with Jesus for eternity. Those of us who are left behind, we grieve Teresa's passing, but we can take comfort in knowing that she is with her Savior. We can trust also that God is with us today and always. And if there is someone here who doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, I can tell you that Teresa would ask you this day to talk to God. Even if you don't quite know who God is, talk to God and ask God to reveal himself to you, to let Jesus come into your heart so that you too will know the peace and the joy that Teresa knew. In our order of service that many of you have, there is something on the bottom called a God wink. And that's there, and I wanted to share with you how that came about. It was sent to me by Teresa's sister, Jane. 
It was the devotional that popped up on her Facebook page on December 21st. Now, for those who maybe haven't heard the term God wink, it's another way of saying a coincidence or what I like to call a God incidence. It's something that God orchestrates for us. It's a divine moment where God steps into and touches our lives. And Jane said that at first when she read this, it was just a small devotional, and she thought that it might have been meant to give her courage. But in retrospect, it seems that God used this little devotional as a way of telling us all that Teresa is now at peace, that her health struggles, all of her anxieties are over, because Teresa now lives in paradise with our Savior, with all those who have come before, with all of the saints in heaven. Teresa is at peace, and that peace is the peace that she would want each of us to have and to hold on to along with our memories and our love of Teresa. Amen. There is a poem by David Harkins that I think speaks to Teresa's heart as well as ours, and I'd like to read that to you now. It's called She is Gone. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what she would want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. We pray today for one another in our need and for all people everywhere who mourn this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, offer strength. To all those who are sinned, Lord, show your mercy. And to all who sorrow, your peace. Keep us faithful in our love for one another. 
we know that all that we have was a gift for, from you. As you first gave Teresa to us, we now give her back to you, Lord. And to you, Lord, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Before I offer our blessing, I wanted to share with you first that Teresa's interment is at Sherwood Memorial Park in Salem, and if you are planning to go, you will be directed in terms of driving down, and the, the instructions that I have been given is if you are in the line of cars, please be very careful. There is not a police escort, and so keep close to the car in front of you, as close as you safely can, but also be aware of other drivers who may not realize that there is a procession going by. Chris asked me to share that afterwards, everyone is invited to come back to their home for a small remembrance, a gathering, and a time of sharing. And also, if you do have a desire to give a memorial offering, he asks that you give to whatever your favorite charity is in Teresa's name. Please bow your heads for our blessing. May the strength of God sustain you. May the power of God preserve you. May the hands of God protect you, and may the way of God direct you. May God's love go with you on this day and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask that you please remain seated until the family has departed the room. Mm -hmm. 